Item number nine, public comment on items not on this agenda. It is the Council's policy to refer matters raised in this forum to staff for investigation and or action where appropriate. The Brown Act prohibits the Council from discussing or acting upon any matter not agendized pursuant to state law. Would anyone like to address the Council under public comment? Carolyn? Yeah, Carolyn Livingood, Cheryl Drive. I just have two things I wanted to say. Number one, I want to thank the city for cleaning and painting the Sneath Lane retaining walls. It's a delight to drive home daily by there and see that clean, neat look. I just hope it doesn't turn into a graffiti blackboard, but it's gorgeous, and thank you. The other thing I want to thank publicly, anyone who volunteered or attended at the Wall That Heals this weekend at Golden Gate National Cemetery. I think you had to be there, not only for the wall, but what took place was a teamwork of more than 150 people. And as one of the men said, and I'm not gonna mention any names here, there's no I in team. And it was surely true. I never saw anything like it before other than maybe like when the lions took over with the gas explosion here. It was fantastic. And I'll close with one remark. There were some representatives who came up from San Diego because the wall is headed down there for the midway, the ship. And they said that San Bruno set the bar so high this weekend, they didn't know how they were gonna measure up. And frankly, I don't think they will. Thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. Anyone else? Good evening, Marty Medina, Garden Avenue. I am here tonight as a concerned parent and teacher, uh, concerned parent and resident. The San Bruno Park School District, once again, is having financial problems. It's been all over the local news, and they just recently uh, announced that they are pink slipping 17 teachers for next year. They're also will have to increase the class sizes to 31 students for all of K through eight, and approximately, approximately half of the classrooms will be split with first graders, with second graders, third and fourth, however it would be. In response to these cuts, over 400 uh, members have joined our face group, uh, Facebook group and our fundraising uh, members have accepted a challenge to raise $191,000. Uh, we're in really tough uh, times right now to raise that amount of money in a little over a month. With the 191000 those funds would be able to restore four teaching positions for this current year and an additional three teaching positions for next year. I understand the San Bruno Community Foundation will eventually have approximately 70 million from the PG&E agreement. I attended the last two foundation meetings and requested their help, but unfortunately they are not ready to accept any grant applications until later in the fall. That will be too late. The, the, the teachers will be laid off and there will be no help for our students. So anything you can do there to help, because it is my understanding that you all will eventually approve the policies and procedures for that foundation. I also understand the city council has no authority over the schools. They're a separate entity. But I believe that every single one of you care about San Bruno and, it, it's, and our children. The school district has a new superintendent and a new CBO. So I'm hoping that they can have some tools with the fund to do something when they get here. Because to try to run a school with 17 less teachers than now is, is a mounting task. So I respectfully request the council to hold a study session to discuss ways that we can help our students. There's no other group that's gonna be able to help them. So please listen to your heart, think about it, and consider what you can really do to help those students now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else under public comment? Hi, Terry Peterson. 
This is the fourth time I'll be talking to you about this. I apologize that I'm a little repetitive. Uh, this is about the cities being helpful in communicating with the citizens. I think all of you use the internet, you use Google to search things, to find out how to do daily tasks, to learn about activities in your city or in your state. <clears throat> and the city has recently made some progress in regularly posting searchable PDFs with minutes of meetings on the internet. But it's still not happening completely. In fact, it's happening in a madly uh, lopsided way. For instance, tonight's agenda and uh, documents supporting it are only partially searchable and you have to look at each page to figure out which ones are not searchable to tell if you're covering your material or not. If, the, if San Bruno had a city-state document secrecy plan, it couldn't be better at hiding information, and here's why. It used to be you could search maybe even before five, I think it was before five years ago, you could search and find out all kinds of things about what's going on in the city through this simple process of the council minutes. You, the council seems to cover almost every aspect of the city and those minutes are, and the agendas are fabulous tools. But now when you search it, you find very little because the PDFing, PDF PDFing those minutes and agendas in a searchable fashion has not been happening. I don't know where the problem is, but I, I would appreciate it if there's anything you can do to improve it. Thank you very much. Honorable Mayor, City Council members, um, two things I'd like to ask. Just state um, your name for the record. Uh, Russ Steins, uh, 851 Reed Avenue. Um, two items. One is um, I've asked you guys a few times to uh, expand the notification to 600 feet plus um, for anything that goes, any initiative that goes on the ballot. Um, that's one thing I'd like to just remind you of. Um, I'm hoping one day you guys take that up. And then the second thing I'd like to bring up, um, I don't know if this has ever been considered, but possible term limits for you guys. Um, just something that maybe we can consider. I mean, the President of the United States only gets eight years, so I'm just thinking that maybe we can come up with some term limits for City Council, maybe eight years, and then you've got to sit out for a little while and give somebody else a chance and go on like that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Because he tired of your many mics. Good evening. My name is Alessandra Clark. And I'm going to follow up um, what Marty was saying in regards to the San Bruno Park fundraiser group for the schools. Um, we did forget to mention and wanted to bring some things to your attention in regards to some of the programs, some of the things we kind of threw together as quickly as we could within the first month that we had together. Um, this evening we had our first restaurant fundraiser down at Chili's. We're also going to be hosting... Um, at Pasta Pomodoro, the 20th and the 21st uh, for the schools. Unfortunately, there is a flyer you'll need for that. And if you go to the Facebook page, whether it be under the parents working group or the fundraising group, you'll see that posted there. And let's see. Oh, and we're also putting together a walkathon starting. Uh, we're, we're working at the date for May 3rd. So we're in the planning stages of that. We're rushing rather quickly. Um, but we're, we're looking for, you know, support, sponsors, and so on and so forth. Because we're, we're all really working very hard. We're, we're very concerned about the students, about the teachers, the staff. It's not, you know, teachers are very important, but the staff is also just as important. Uh, the, the students rely on the staff quite a bit. So any support, any ideas you could possibly throw our way would be wonderful. But we'll... We'll be in touch. We're pretty active on Facebook, so if y'all can find us on the Facebook page, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? 